Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is um, how to do the basic proportions um, in an underpainting of a human face. I have my subject slightly larger here <clears throat> at eye level, which is the way I like to do it, and the starting is simply to decide where roughly I'm going to do chin and that. So this is the start. Now we notice that his eyes have a slight cast. They're not just straight across, so we're going to take account of that. The nose <clears throat> will be roughly here. I have uh, marked off the basic proportions just in an estimate and the mass of the hair. And I'm not, what you should notice is that I'm not going to make these shadows as dark as they are, um, not quite as dark as they are. I'm using very thin paint. And I'm just trying to settle proportion on them. Now, I have a medium here with my pass, with my, uh, uh, acrylic paint. And I can, if I'm quick, I can wipe out things that I don't want to be there. So this is, as I say, not... Um, we're going to home in gradually, is the idea here, on this likeness. So, this shadow under the nose, the photographer's called a loop. We'll put in a shape for the mouth, just to get the line. Do a little minor shadowing on the tongue. And at this point, I'm going to put a slightly darker color where I think the eyes would be, but you notice I am not going to draw eyes. I'm just putting in, it's considered like a skull. We're going to put in where we think the eye will be eventually. And draw a little bit. The brow, that became darker than I wanted it to, so I'll tap that out. So you can see this gradually happening. I'm also going to put in the shadow areas, the major shadow areas, which cover this side of the face and the nose. And you can already see the form of the face happening. And I might go just a little bit farther. Um, in other words, beyond where I think it's going to go, so that I can cut back in with background. But how quickly this forms, you see. It's beginning already to resemble this person. So we are going to be fairly quickly into um, a stage where we can use white paint. Now, gradually, I'm going to darken some of the features just to see where they're going to be. But I'm not quite precise. I want to be precise uh, in the placement, but not detailed as you might think you would be if you were drawing this first. I, this method does not rely on a drawing in a typical sense. Rather, you see, I am improving, defining where shadows are going to be. 
Now this is all subject to change if you don't have this right where you think it is supposed to be. You can make changes. But we want to try to keep up the level of concentration that would allow us to have a good idea at every point of who this is. We don't want to be too much in departure. Right, if I see I want to make a little bit wider a distance, then you see how easy it is in this way. I don't have to erase anything. And for the lighter tones, I just wait until the brush <clears throat> is more or less out of paint. And again, I'm going to put in some more darker tones. Uh, we don't want to put it as dark as the photograph. This is why another reason I have light on the photograph, there would be a temptation to go too dark. And that is for the next phase, that we will go darker. This is just for placement. A general placement of the features. The mass of the hair can definitely be in darker, yes, but not. I would like to still see some canvas through it. The ear <clears throat> under. You see how I'm gradually darkening and yet leaving some hint of the canvas through to be visible through this. Now at some point I will use a smaller brush. But for right now still, I think the big brush keeps me from being too willing to make um, too much detail. Definitely I don't want to use the little brush yet. All right, so I'm going to check and see if I have this slant in the eyes, the mouth of course, and the nose all reflect the slant of the head. Now I have not checked this. There are ways I could use to measure it, but I'm pretty much satisfied right now with the place. Really uh, refined, even still with the big brush, these features. I'm going to use white paint mixed with a little of the um, sienna. This is, by the way, a um, technique that they refer to as an underpainting, and the French refer to it as a gray underpainting. There's a word for that called risai, which is not necessary to know, but you see how this begins to make this look even more three-dimensional. And it's just a matter of managing the color of the paint. I, why am I insisting on this big brush? Because I don't want to make tiny little strokes yet. I want to try as much as possible to keep this free of, and I can make this white paint thick, that is not a problem. I just don't want the, I don't want you to make the um, dark paint thick. And there is a very good reason for this, and you will have a nice surprise when we start doing this, um, the second phase in oil.
Now, this is not the only way, of course, to do these things. That's just not the case. All right, what I want to show you now with a mixture of the white and black is the background. Sometimes people work on a tone canvas, some people work on a white canvas. I'm just trying to show you now the idea of keeping a painting with the negative space. In other words, I can start forming his head or making a correction, as I see I need right here, on the jawline. And I can make this with the background. That's always a pleasant discovery when we see the background color can help us. We've painted in the background and we're now with using both background, the negative space, and going back in with the positive space, the actual subject, you see how I'm forming this person. This didn't take long. Careful not to get too much color in the dark areas still. I will be continuing this process until I am more or less satisfied. Now the white paint can be put on quite thickly. And this doesn't need to stay white. Yes, I could use another color, but for the sake of it right now, I am going to use this thick white paint. You see how it stands up and makes a form that we can use, and this is part of the lightness. The shape of the head is the part of the lightness, the foundation of a lightness, and we want by all means to spend as much time as is necessary so that we can proceed. Um, so you can see how closely this resembles the subject photograph. This is the important phase. This is more important. Now, at this point, I can take measurements. I can compare the length on the photograph of, let's say, the space. How is the relationship of the eyes, the nose? This triangle is very, very important. So, you see how close we can get. Now, I do not want you to get bogged down in a likeness with this subject. We're not here to do want some likeness, yes. Nobody's going to walk in here and say this is Shirley Temple. But it does look somewhat like the man as he poses. And you see that I'm doing the construction of the eyes, uh, which are subject to change and, and correction. There is nothing, if this is a little low, I can go back in and change it. This is the joy of the paint that works to dry quickly. Now, in the next phase, we'll be doing oil. And we will see that this was an underpainting indeed, because we are going to be painting over it with oil paint. The technique will be the same. But you have this as your um, underpainting, which can't be erased in case you do have to have a lot of correction. So this concludes the first stage of the demonstration. This is the underpainting in acrylic.